I think this concept of ETL is one of the more important concepts that we're going to cover here in these last three or four chapters here of Course 170 at Learn It First. I think that you should really pay attention to the whole concept of ETL. Um, if you are not working with ETL today, chances are very high you will be asked to work with something ETL related here in the near future. So let's kind of walk through a video that talks a little more deeply about it. So we said in the last video that SSIS is Microsoft's ETL tool. This is our extraction, transform, load. And we've kind of used those terms, but we haven't really gone into details. Well, this chapter is kind of the details chapter. So we're going to see what it means to extract and see what our options are to transform and how we actually load, okay? Now, we do, again, straight out kind of the last video, most of our businesses have data in a lot of different formats. You have a database on SQL Server. You have a database on SQL Server 2005, a database on SQL Server 2012. You have a database on PostgreSQL, uh, uh, some DBase files, some old Visual Fox Pro applications that nobody can seem to get rid of. You have um, expense tracking in Excel. Okay, So we have all kinds of data sources here. Okay. And, I, and for a new person coming into the ETL or the business intelligence world, this, it's often kind of difficult to understand how such a situation happens. I, find, I found myself when I was first getting into this maybe a little over a decade ago saying, why would these companies come up with all these different data sources? Why don't they just all use one SQL server and be done with it? Now, it's really not so easy. Let's take a scenario that kind of walks us through ideas of how things like this happen, okay? So let's say that it's 2001, and we're going to model the AdventureWorks company here. And the AdventureWorks company has already a brick-and-mortar store, and so they launch in 2001, belatedly, right, a web store, and they want to be able to sell their bicycles and parts and so forth on the internet, okay? It's an ASP-based website, and they launch with a SQL Server 2000 database. Very cool. So, the, and the customers, by the way, if they have questions, they just say, hey, here's our phone number, give us a call, or here's our email address, customer service at adventureworks.com, right? And so they're supposed to just email them directly. No fancy ticketing system or anything like that, okay? So 2003 comes along, and they are doing really well. And they decide to buy a competitor, okay? And that competitor uses a ticketing system. You know what I mean, a ticketing system? You know, customers write in tickets, and you can see the life cycle and say, hey, how quickly are my customer service agents answering uh, tickets? You know, how often are they closing tickets a day, et cetera, right? So that competitor used a pretty slick PHP and MySQL ticketing system. MySQL, MySQL, um, another database product, another DBMS, right? PHP uh, being a front-end language here. And the AdventureWorks management says, you know what? We like this idea of a ticketing system. Instead of us building our own or buying one, we're going to just go ahead and use the one that they have. So bam, you have two technologies in play now. You have Microsoft SQL Server 2000 and MySQL 3.23. Okay. Version numbers are important, right? There's all kind of issues with interoperability between different versions, okay? So 2004 comes along, and they're doing great. Uh, everything's working great, and they need some project management. We have more employees now. We have maybe some uh, employees who work off-site. We need to be able to manage everybody, so we need project management. So they buy a PHP MySQL project management system. And they also decide, you know what, we want to get into physical mailing and emailing, okay? So we're going to go buy this software package that handles all of our marketing, and we'll be able to tell open rates, and did somebody visit this page, and we'll be able to track everything that they do. It's going to be awesome, okay? All right, so here we are, 2004. We have several data sources, right? This is very common, okay? So now we've added access, because the marketing mailer is an access-based system that Marcus down in the marketing department just runs by himself. He had access on his computer, and so they had it, took care of it, no big deal. Okay. Now, 2005, time to upgrade, ASP, getting a little long in the tooth, it's time to change. So they went to an ASP.NET website with a SQL 25, uh, 2005 backend, right? They did their upgrade from 2000 to 2005. So our 
I don't know, our technology chart, if you want to call it that, has kind of been upgraded a little bit. Okay? We're, they're still on MySQL 3.23. They should have migrated that to 4.0, right? Or 5.1 or something, right? Uh, so 2008, their website is getting more popular. Okay? They now need a new supply chain management. Things are going really, really well for the company. And they have so many employees, they also need to create a HR uh, package here so they can manage payroll, time off, vacation requests for their entire company. Okay, So the supply chain management, SQL Server 2008, the employee HR payroll, DB2. And you ask yourself, well, why would a company have SQL 2005 and 2008? Remember, these are, in many cases, vendor packages. When you go to a vendor package, that vendor package has a supported set of software. You must install our software on, or these are our requirements, right? Could be that those requirements were SQL Server 2008. So a lot of times you, you want to consolidate more, but sometimes it does become quite difficult to balance the needs of the organization versus the requirements of the vendor. Okay. Now, 2010 comes along, website sales continue, we're growing overseas. Now we need a shipping database. We need to be able to calculate things better. Our current shipping database is just, we're paying an extra buck to $2 per shipping because we're not getting accurate uh, estimates here, so we've decided to change. And we need to attract uh, to track employee expenses. So we've started using these Excel spreadsheets, you see. Okay. So now we have a pretty large set of data here. We have a CSV file. You know what a CSV file is down here? That's comma separated values. You know, like uh, Scott, comma, Wiggum, comma, um, DBA, right? That would be represent three columns, first, last, uh, job title, right? Okay, so CSV, comma, separated values. And it's actually very common for companies to make these types of CSV files available on a monthly basis where you download and you just upload your copy to your website or to whatever application that uses it. Uh, we do that here at Learn It First um, with a couple of different things here. Um, and then Microsoft Excel. Okay? So kind of picture this. This is a typical organization. It, this might only be a 25 or 50 person company, which is a big, big enough company, right? The bigger the company, the more technologies that we're going to have, right? So it's now 2012 and company executives and management have been playing a game. Okay, you know this game, right? <laughs> Buzzword bingo. <laughs> I made this one. I thought this was kind of funny. This was an old bingo card that Microsoft put out at a professional developers concert. Uh, um, uh, PDC uh, conference. I couldn't think of the C word. Uh, I don't know, 97, 99, something like that. And I just kind of whited it out and put the words in here. But I mean, these are all <laughs> buzzwords, right? That you know that CEOs of a 50 person organization are talking about the data quality and they want some scorecards and market segmentation this and master data that, right? <laughs> so with that word, right? Uh, with that game, sorry, your executives want a BI solution, okay? So you name it, they want it. They want charts, graphs, uh, spark lines. Um, they want to slice and dice. They want pivot tables, pivot charts, okay? But, oops, no money. <laughs> we can't go buy an off-the-shelf off -shelf package. Sorry, we don't have $4 million or a $1 million or 500000 okay? Which is not the worst thing for you. This is your opportunity, right? So you're, you know, junior level guy over at AdventureWorks and you volunteer and you say, hey, I'm, this is what I want to get into. Boss says, great, go for it. Okay. So you decide to create a data warehouse. Okay. <sighs> Deep breath here. All right. So th this is a perfect time for a data warehouse. Anytime you have a lot of disparate data sources that you need to ultimately create a cohesive set of reports from, you should be thinking, how do I make my data warehouse? How do I get all this data from these different data sources, Access, MySQL, SQL 2005, SQL 2012, and bring them into SQL Server so that I can make a relational data warehouse, okay? You then say from that relational data warehouse, that's going to be way too big for people to be able to query real time. So then I'm going to create a multi-dimensional database on top of it because multi-dimensional databases are pre-aggregated, right? It pre-stores all those aggregations. So my CEO, my uh, CFO, the IT management, 
they don't have to wait. When they want to run a query, bam, instant. Okay, that's the reason we go with multidimensional because it's pre-calculated. Okay? And so you also decide to go and install Excel 2013 on all of the CEO, CFO, CXO, uh, and your managers so that they can do pivot tables and pivot charts. Okay, and you're gonna you could put Power Pivot on if you were doing Tabular or something. Um, and you also decide, hey, I want to learn reporting services. I want to learn how I can build these types of reports and have them emailed out in the morning on a subscription basis, or we can build an internal uh, website with all kind of cool dashboards, which is all about chapter 17, right? Okay. So lots of fun. Okay. So the thing about this company data, let's revisit the idea of all those different sources. Your customer, you have a customer that come in to make an order from the website, kind of a small order. Okay? And that same customer submits a help ticket. Now, the, the problem is you can see it already. The SQL Server 2005 database that runs the website doesn't talk to the MySQL 3.23 database that runs uh, the ticketing system, right? So there's no relationship between these two. Okay? And now your customer rep the person who was answering the ticketing system needs to make an order for a replacement part. All right, now we have to go back to our supply chain management. We have, okay, and now we don't have this integrated with the supply chain management here. So we got to work on that. Then the salesperson says, hey, do you know, let me talk to my management. This is actually a buyer for a large organization. They were placing a small order and they want to see if it really meets their needs. I think there's a lot of opportunity here for a long-term relationship with this guy. Let me take them to a Yankees game or let me take them to a Dallas Cowboys game. So now our salesperson has an expense report that they're going to submit through Excel. And now the customer pulls through and makes a large order. Yay. Right, this is all loosely connected stuff, but the key question, how did we acquire the customer? Where did they come from? How much did we have to pay to acquire that customer? And that's called a customer acquisition cost and all uh, companies look for that type of information, okay? That's the things that your, customer, your management want to know. So integration services is your ETL tool. You are going to extract the data from the source. You're going to go to all of those different data sources and you're going to write queries that give you the information that you need. And you're going to bring those down to a staging area. Okay, this is an optional step. Um, I'm going to use it in this course just because it's easier to talk about one than to not have one, okay? But in that staging area, you're going to make your transformations to the data. You might need to make everything uppercase or make everything lowercase or make it proper case or trim the strings or split columns. One column stores two sets of information, a product ID and a name, and you need two columns at the end of it. Okay, lots of things can be done with print transformations. And then you're going to load the data into the relational data warehouse. So it goes from the source to the staging area to the relational data warehouse. And from there, you're going to process your cube, okay? You're gonna process that multidimensional database, which tells the multidimensional database, hey, I have some new data, you need to update your aggregates. You need to come pre-calculate and aggregate those. And finally, you go in and you build a dashboard. And you know, this is up to you as far as which tool that you want, and how you wanna do it. You're gonna to have to kind of play around with these a little bit to figure them out. But this is the kind of thing that your users want. They want spark lines and charts and graphs and such like that. So let's get into playing with SSIS in the next video.